I'm a comedian. You get HD TV? Three sheets? You don't? You should, this is a good episode. You should watch this episode. It's good. You'll like it. It's good. Normally, I would start this video uh, at my desk at home, but I am currently on the road uh, in Manchester, night, New Hampshire. Every city around the world. Don't be jealous. Uh, so this is the Mexico episode um, that I'm going to give commentary to. What do you guys all here for? Okay. Let me, okay. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's why it's better when the jokes come from the mic. Um, all right. Yeah, so enjoy this episode of, uh, of Three Sheets in Mexico. Warning, if you ever drink tequila in the tequila drinking capital of the world, you may get a little surprise. You'll see if my head falls off later. But first, tequila. Not only a drink, it's also a place in Mexico. Located in the state of Jalisco, tequila the region is where tequila the spirit was born. And I bring with me many questions. What is agave? What is blue agave? It slices, it dices. Look at that, wow. And why is the difference so important when it comes to tequila? What's the proper way to sip on a fine tequila? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's the not so proper way to put back the cheap stuff? And what's the difference between the light, the gold, and the dark stuff? I'll find out all those things and if the tequila does me in, I'll see if a local prescription can combat the dreaded tequila hangover when I go three sheets with tequila. Guadalajara, just outside of tequila in the Mexican state of Jalisco. Here, the art of drinking tequila has been perfected above and beyond any other place on earth. I'm anxious to master this Mexican pastime, but first, I can't slam tequila on an empty stomach, so I go to Santo Coyote, a restaurant in Guadalajara where they cook everything with tequila. You know, my friend Steve likes mushrooms, but they make him crazy for like a day. He, one time he took some mushrooms and he went and hid in his closet. <laughs> you know Steve? He also says Steve. Hey, Steve. Huh? Steve McKenna? Steve. You know him, okay, he knows him. My favorite part about being in a kitchen is that you get to taste everything. Sorry. I guess I misunderstood. <laughs> He's making the house specialty, a fried tortilla topped with steak, mushrooms, and chipotle sauce spiked with tequila, of course. <laughs> and after seeing what goes into cooking here, Time to eat. So you're a waitress here? Yes, I am. You speak very good English. You speak English very well. And what's this, kale? Albaca. Chewbacca? Albaca. But when you put it in your mouth, you chew it? Yeah, but... And you call it Chewbacca. You're not supposed to eat it. Really? No, it's just no, a decoration. It's Chewbacca either. I'll show you a decoration. By the way, she doesn't know this, but I'm not real big on sharing. Go ahead, take it. Don't let me stop you. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's this? More meat, more salsa, more tacos, even a couple more tequila-based foo-foo drinks. I'm full. This food is amazing. This is like literally a world-class Mexican restaurant, but what I want to do now is I want to drink, because I've already had a taste of the um, tamarindo uh -huh. margarita. So what I want now is like a bar that has like, you know, like bullfighters. 
stuff. You can go to the my stand stuff. Which way is that? That way? No, it's... That way? Okay. So I'm gonna go there now. Thank you so much. I had a great time. Can I take this? It's off to the tequila bar. La Maestranza is a cantina in Old Town, Guadalajara. And they have just about every tequila imaginable. This could get ugly. I joined some guys at the bar who are drinking flaming La Cucaracha bombs. That's tequila and coffee liqueur on fire. Dropped into a beer and slammed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Drinking one of these is enough to make your head spin. But just in case that's not enough, the bartenders give you a little help. And then there's a little bit of oh my God. <laughs> oh, Are you ready? Yeah. Go. <laughs> okay. Great. That was awesome. <laughs> Actually, that totally sucked. I don't know what messes you up worse. The drink or the head shake? Now is, is your turn. Luis. Yeah, it is your turn. It's your turn. No, no, you next, you next, buddy, come on. Come on. Todo, 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 todo. Do not posada. Drink the whole thing. Jeez, what time is it? Slow motion. Muy lento. We got a surprise for you, we got a surprise. We're gonna break your neck now. How's that for a surprise, ready? I have to be honest. I don't even remember what this drink tastes like. All I can think about is getting my bell rung. He goes, we got a surprise for you. I they're gonna give me like a little trinket. Uh, you know, it's just something fun. <laughs> okay, enough violence. Time to calm things down and get to the bottom of what tequila actually is. Or, what about this? Let's establish what tequila is not with our three sheets, Book of Tequila Fallacies. <laughs> Fallacy number one, tequila comes from cactus. Not true. Tequila comes from the blue agave plant, which may look like a cactus, but is actually a member of the lily family. Its fleshy leaves contain a sweet nectar, and it has a starchy, potato-like core, often referred to as a pineapple. Fallacy number two, tequila and mezcal are the same thing. Not true. The term mezcal refers to all spirits that come from agave. Tequila, however, is a category of mezcal that is derived from the blue agave. Tequila lovers consider the blue agave to be sweeter and superior to other forms of agave. And fallacy number three, tequila bottles often contain a tequila worm. Also not true. While some forms of mezcal are bottled with a worm, none of the officially recognized tequila makers bottle their product with a worm. So there you have it. Back to the tequila bar, where it's time to test my tequila tasting palate. Coming up, in a blind taste test, can my new friend and I tell the difference between three different tequilas? What the hell is that? Plus, I play with sharp objects. Ah! And find out the hard way why having an agave plant nearby is a good thing. <laughs> he says, careful. Okay, so I'm in an opulent tequila bar in Guadalajara, Mexico, where they have hundreds of different tequilas to choose from. And my new friend claims to be an expert in tequila. However, I think I know more than him, so it's time for a blind taste test. He's gonna sample three different reposados, or rested tequilas. You like it? Wow. What is reposado? This calls for a three sheets tequila documentary. When drinking tequila, you may notice it can range in color from clear to dark. These colors are representative of the basic tequila categories. There's Blanco tequila, which is the clear stuff. 
It's aged for no more than a couple of months. Next is reposado, or rested tequila, which is aged in wood barrels from two months to a year. And then there is añejo, or aged tequila, which ages in barrels from one to three years. As tequila ages, it takes on the color from the wood barrels. This is why the longer tequila is aged, the darker it becomes. <laughs> now that we understand that, let's drink. Once we've primed our palates with plenty of tequila, we're ready to see who has the best tequila taste buds. First up, Ricardo. The three reposados he'll compare are Gran Centenario, Jose Cuervo Tradicional, and Don Julio. He sips all three before guessing. The first one was Don Julio. Primero es Don Julio. Primero. Okay, el número dos. Centenario. Okay. Uh, y el tercero. Tres. I certainly can't do any worse than him, so let's see if I can do better. Yeah, tie, tie me up. I compare Jose Cuervo Tradicional, Tres Generaciones, and Don Julio. By the way, not to be cocky or anything, but I know my tequila. You know what? This is, this is easy. This is uh, the uh, Jose Cuervo. This is the Don Julio. And this is the Tres Generaciones. Awesome. How do I know so much about tequila? I learned a thing or two yesterday. When I took an hour trip from Guadalajara to the town of Tequila, where it all began. Here, Blue Agave Farms stretch for miles, and several tequila makers base their operations here. I'm going to the oldest of them, the one and only Jose Cuervo, Joe Crow. 50,000 people. Where Rudolfo, the Jose Cuervo PR guy, takes me to the field. I immediately stumble on something that clearly explains what makes this region so special in growing blue agave. And this is this is obsidian. This is volcanic. Rock, yeah, we have right? the volcano in the back, mm -hmm. so that's why we have a lot of minerals uh -huh. on the ground to give all the flavor to the blue agave. And so that's why it grows so well here, right? Yeah. After some geology, time for fun. Hey! Rudolfo lets me play with sharp objects. It slices. It dices. Look at that. Wow. Of course, my I tool isn't as big as yeah. this guy's. Ah! 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 You and did I tell you, agave plants are sharp? Ah! Careful. Care <laughs> he says careful. As luck would have it, I happen to be surrounded by a remedy. So now I'm all better. Look at that. <sighs> now my leg's drunk. <laughs> the blue agave's thick, aloe-like nectar is considered good for skin irritations. The leaves are highly fibrous, so the harvesters keep their tools very sharp. But it's not the leaves they're after. They cut them away. This is hard work. To get at the so-called piña, or pineapple, which can weigh anywhere from 25 to 100 pounds when harvested. So this is the inside of it. Yes, and you can try it if you want. Yeah? Yeah, it doesn't have flavor at all. Does it, it has no flavor? No flavor. <laughs> no flavor. No flavor. It's like a big potato, that's it. But you will see the difference uh, after cooking, and yeah. you will see the sugars, and it's very different. I'm ready to taste this sweet roasted agave, but apparently this outdoor barbecue comes with a dress code. <laughs> look, you, have a, you look like an so idiot. Last, I'm to wear them too. All right, let's go. After donning my new agave tasting headgear, I'm ready to see what the hype is all about. Just, just suck it. Don't, don't, don't eat the fire. Okay. Just take the juice. Mm, wow. That's good. 
It's like strawberry jelly or something, or grape jelly. So good. You want to try some, Curtis? Once the pineapples are roasted, they go through a system of conveyors where they're mashed. The pulp is discarded, and the juice, known as honey water, is used as the base for tequila. By George, I think I've got it. In fact, I bet I could give tours here now. Where's the microphone? Hi, thank you, thank you for coming out tonight. People are always wondering how you take the plant and create alcohol out of it. What you do is you, 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 you harvest it, you cut the stalks off of it, and then you heat it up, you squeeze the juices out of it, add yeast, distill it, and then the, there you go. Then you have tequila. Okay, now it's time for my favorite part of the show. Rudolfo takes me deep into the Jose Cuervo caves for some seriously good tequila. Coming up, what do a fine tequila and a fine cognac have in common? Find out when I experience the proper way to drink some of the best tequila on earth. Stay tuned for more Three Sheets right after this. What? I'm at Jose Cuervo in Tequila, Mexico, where Rudolfo is taking me to a place very few people have had an opportunity to go, the Cuervo Caves. I love my job. So I'm about to try the best tequila in the world from the oldest tequila manufacturer in the world, Jose Cuervo, from the tap, from the barrel here. Yep. Prepare yourself for a lesson on drinking tequila with class. Okay, this is the Venencia. Cool. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, and I just dip it in here like this? Yes. That's fun. And, uh, and then, how do I pour it? Like this? Yes. After filling up, we're ready to drink. I need help. How do I drink a fine tequila? Okay, first of all, this is a cognac cup. Okay. The cognac, you have to hold it like that. Okay. To warm all the alcohol. Okay. For the tequila, it's different, okay? Mm -hmm. You hold it just like that. Oh, okay. The aged tequila, they're just for sipping. Okay. You don't mix it with uh, juice, uh, always in a room temperature. Mm -hmm. So we have a tradition here. We have to say, salud a la buena vida. For the good life. For the good before life. Before you drink it. Okay. okay. So say, live in la vida loca and then drink it? <laughs> yes. Okay. So live in la vida loca and then sip. <laughs> Ooh. That's the best tequila in the world. Yep. The Jose Cuervo Family Reserve is a blend of tequila ranging in age from seven to 30 years. Mmm, that's delicious. Can I take this home with me? Sure. All right, so that was a refined tequila drinking experience. But back at the bar, things are anything but refined. One, two, three. Okay. More shots. More beers, more La Cucarachas, topped off with some serious cage rattling. Give me whiplash and cauliflower here. That's a way for it. My work here is done. I've proven my tequila tasting prowess and probably done a little too much research for my own good. My guess is tomorrow will bring the dreaded tequila hangover. Sure enough, the next morning comes, and let's just say, I'm not craving another shot of tequila. But there's a so-called day after establishment that a lot of locals go to after a night of many shots. It's called Tortas Tonio. I hope this place works because I don't feel so good. There might be vomiting. I don't know. There might be. Just <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> the specialty here, tortas, Mexican-style sandwiches. And supposedly, it's the best way to treat a hangover. And this guy is going to show me how they're made. We open. OK. Put a, uh, like a, this of meat. Sure. We're going to call that a fistful. What? Fistful. Oh. Fistful of meat. <laughs> OK. And we put the meat okay. this way. Yeah. We have it, we put it on the plate. Okay. 
and the customer yeah. can serve the, the sauce. Oh, then we put the sauce on ourselves. The salsa? Okay. Because I'm hungover, my new friend has a special recommendation. The chili. Okay. Hold on. When you are crudo, yeah. we put it a lot of chili. Oh my god, that's hot. Okay, good. I'm not gonna be a lot of, a lot. A lot? A lot. A popular phrase around here is ahogadas, which means drown. And they definitely drown their tortas. Next, lime juice. I don't know, I call it a nut crusher. Nut crusher? Because you put your, um, your testicle. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to put your testicles in. No, you don't want to put your testicles in. Now a few beans and some tomato sauce. So I have a hangover. Okay. Estoy crudo. Crudo, amigo. Great. Right. And you know what's awesome is a tequila hangover. So this is the cure, right? Yeah. yeah. The best you guys, have you guys slept yet? Not at all. See? Here's the deal with this place. People come here after going out, but they don't go home first. In keeping with local custom, I wash my torta down with a cerveza. Uh, to the dog. To the hair. And when you eat one of these, you definitely need something cold to drink. It's really hot. It hurts me. It's burning. I'm out. I can feel it now hitting my stomach. You can see everyone walking in groggy. Dare I say three sheets to the wind? <laughs> hey, remember this guy? See, this is how you can tell this is a real place where every drunk comes, because this guy, I got him drunk last night. Do not put cider on him! This wasn't planned. He just said he was gonna come here and eat. Well, I think the hot chili sauce has officially wiped out my hangover. And that's pretty much the tradition here in Guadalajara. A town where tequila drinking is taken very seriously at times. That's the best tequila in the world. Yeah. And not so seriously at other times. <laughs> the problem is, when you drink as much tequila as I did, the memories sort of blur together. But luckily, I have my very own Three Sheets video diary to refer back to. From the blue agave fields of tequila, ah, to the swanky tequila bars of Old Town. From the pristine, to the down and out crazy, ah! it's been great. Tequila, look, it really does put hair on your chest. And you know, you know. All right, so, what happened? Time out, yeah. Are you getting this? I don't know, is I wish you were never born, is that a nickname? I wish you were never born? I mean, I know she's talking to me, but is it, is it a nickname? She says it a lot. Does my hair look as good as his? How's my hair compared to his? 